of France. Today, the occupiers continue to actively assault the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces along the entire front line. And yesterday evening, news emerged that Zaluzhny will now assume the position of Ukraine's ambassador to the United Kingdom. So, quite a twist. Uh, so, he did everything he could and will now work and live in the United Kingdom. So, feel free to share your thoughts on this matter and congratulations for him in the comments. Uh, I think uh, those who hoped that Zaluzhny would become the president of Ukraine are very disappointed. Now, let's move on to the situation along the front line and start with the Kupensk direction. Here, the occupiers continue to actively assault Sinkivka and they have been shelling incidents in large numbers in the Ivanivka area. So, there is a possibility that they are conducting artillery preparation and will try to push the Ukrainian armed forces from this section of the front across the highway. In the Tabaivka area, the occupiers haven't achieved any success in attacks over the past few days and the front line remains unchanged. But Shalon in the Kupiansk continues. So the occupiers launched an attack yesterday evening, resulting in death of two people. And it was also announced today that the evacuation from 18 settlements in this direction has already been confirmed. A decision has been made on forced and mandatory evacuation from some settlements in the Kupiansk direction, Sini Hyubov. The Defense Council of the Kharkiv region supported the mandatory evacuation of children with their parents, or persons replacing them, or other legal representatives from 18 settlements of the Velikoberlik and Vilkavada territorial communities. As of today, there is information about the residence of 110 minors in the Veliki i Berlik community and about 51 children in the Vilkavatska community. In the area of Svatova, the occupiers show no activity at all, and even the shelling is minimal, so the situation remains unchanged. But in the direction of Krimina, despite the lack of success, the occupiers continue their offensive actions on the village of Terni every day. Also, shelling of frontline settlements continues in the former quantity. In the Sivers direction, the occupiers continue to assault the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces in the area of Bilohorivka. Near Spirne, they haven't achieved any success and the front line remains unchanged. But they have started attempting to advance again in the area of Rozdolivka and approach the outskirts of the village. So we are currently waiting to see how events unfold for them. So it's evident that they are now testing our defense and attempting to break through somewhere. In the Bakhmut direction, the occupiers have concentrated all their efforts on advancing in the area of Klishivka and Andreevka. Since they managed to advance there in recent days, they are doing everything to sustain their success. Within a day, they have conducted five assaults, and the fighting continues. However, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to hold the defense, and there have been no changes along the front line over the day. Shalin is reported in the areas of Bogdanivka and Ivanivska, but no new offensive actions are being conducted. In the Avdiivka direction, the occupiers are showing their highest activity today, with 20 attacks conducted within a day. The fighting continues unabated. In the area of the village of Berdechi, they are attempting to consolidate their positions on the outskirts. And the situation there is complex, so the village is constantly under shelling. The situation is similarly challenging in the area of Arlivka, 
where half of the village is under the control of the occupiers, and they continue the assaults to fully capture it. In Tonenka, the occupiers are also attempting to advance, but there are uh, conflicting reports from different sources. Some claim that the village is uh, practically under Russian control, uh, while others report that the Ukrainian forces have successfully conducted a counterattack and the village is under our fighters' control. So, in any case, the situation is very complex due to the high intensity of daily combat. So, we are waiting to see how events unfold further. Uh, however, it can be said with certainty that the occupies are not relentless and further south in the areas of Peromaiske and Nevelske fighting and heavy shelling continue along the entire front line. In the direction of Marienka, the occupies continue their attempts to capture Krasnohorivka and are pushing deeper into the city. So this situation is extremely challenging as all assaults are accompanied by heavy shelling. However, the front line remains unchanged over the day. Battles are also ongoing in the areas of Georgievka, Pobeda and Novomikhailivka, where the Ukrainian armed forces successfully maintain defense, preventing their occupiers from advancing further as before. In the Vuhlidar direction, all attacks have ceased and shelling of Vuhlidar is being reported. So it seems that the occupiers advancing in various directions have realized that the Ukrainian armed forces are successfully holding their defense and now they are not conducting any attacks. In the Zaporizhia direction, the situation is tense with a significant number of shelling incidents and ongoing offensive actions in Robotina. The occupiers are not achieving any success, suffering significant losses and retreating to their former positions. Therefore, we are waiting to see how the latest phase of offensive actions in this direction will end. In the Kherson direction, the occupiers continue to shout the right bank and make attempts to dislodge the Ukrainian armed forces from there. However, as before, all the efforts are unsuccessful as the Ukrainian armed forces maintain control over the territory. Meanwhile, Russian soldiers have recorded a video Танкин Илон Маск for Sterling. Хотим выразить свою благодарность Илону Маску от морпеха Северного флота за предоставленную гуманитарную помощь в виде Старлинга. Мы будем продолжать крошить неонацистов. Победа будет за нами. As I understand it, Elon Musk is not rushing to address the issue of Russians using Starlink along the front line. Therefore, in the United States, they have decided to investigate this situation. U.S. launches investigation against SpaceX over U Starlink by the Russian military, WP. Democrats of the U.S. House of Representatives have launched an investigation into Elon Musk SpaceX to find out whether the company has taken appropriate measures to prevent Russia from using the Starlink satellite internet service in the war against Ukraine. Representatives Jamie Raskin and Robert Garcia sent a letter demanding that the company report complaints about possible illegal purchases of Starlink terminals, in particular in Russian-occupied regions of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Sweden officially joins NATO. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Prime Minister Christensen, accompanied by Foreign Minister Bilstrom, will now deposit Sweden's instrument of accession to the North Atlantic Treaty with Secretary of State Blinken representing the United States of America as the depository of the treaty.
that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.